Well, the recording session on The Simpsons is where this all starts to come together and where all the magic starts to happen, so to speak. Uh, I absolutely love the process. It's one of the reasons I got into this in the first place. Um, when you're writing for a live orchestra as a composer, there are certain uh, consolations you find you must make um, from the standpoint that writing out in the open air instruments such as, let's say, the flute or the clarinet don't have the carrying power that they normally would have in the recording studio when you have a microphone right by them like this. So it's more difficult writing in a live situation to, to realize the intent of what your music is really about. But in the recording studio, it's, it's a lovely place to work. And um, now my flute player can just simply play here and the sound will be, if it's a solo flute, it'll like fill the whole room. And it's just absolutely glorious when it happens. So the recording process is, to me, a joy. I really, really enjoy doing that. Um, we will put a call out to an average of 35 mus musicians per week. Uh, I'm very organized. I have a, a list of the musicians that I want called in the order in which I want them called and what instruments they play, and I give that to my contractor and he puts the call out for the musicians to see who can, who's available. Uh, they're not all available all the time because they're freelance and sometimes they'll get called to work on a motion picture for three days and they're not available. So then I go to level number two, level number three. The fortunate p thing about living in Los Angeles is the depth of players is unbelievable. It's just amazing. So it's, it's literally impossible to call a bad orchestra here as long as you know what you're doing. So we have 35 people in the studio, and we, we start recording with the cues, the music cues, that have the most instruments first. And we work our way down the size of the orchestra, getting less and less and less. The reason for doing that is in case we have to go into overtime, we go into overtime with the fewer amount of instruments as possible. Um, we record about 30 cues in, give or take three, three and a half hours, something like that. Uh, the musicians have never seen this music before. They walk into the studio and this is all fresh to them. And we'll spit them out one after another and the process is uh, rehearse them a couple of times so that the orchestra gets used to them. Uh, maybe rehearse another one, one or two times so that the orchestra gets more in tune uh, we make recordings, a couple of recordings in a row, maybe three recordings in a row. Normally that's enough to move on to do the next one. And we go very quickly. Um, the, um, the elephant in the room is the budget. Uh, I'm always the, the slave to the budget and I have to be very careful with that to make sure that I stay within the parameters that I've been given. Uh, I have to give the Simpsons folks credits that they really never say anything to me about the budget. Uh, I'm really honored that way, and f that's one of the reasons I take care of it, to make sure that I don't overstep my bounds with them. And then they'll start to pull me back and say, well, you know, if, if you're going to need that kind of money, we don't have that kind of money, and we don't even have the kind of money that we gave you before. We're going to take some of it away now. So I have to be very careful about that. Um, we record, as I say, 35 cues in three, three and a half hours. Um, historically, in a recording session, we all kind of laugh about this, uh, we'll come upon one cue that we just cannot get right. It's either out of tune or it's not together or who knows what. We call it the cue that will not die. And so after going over it maybe 10 times and it not happening, I will stop it, put it aside, we'll move on, we'll start to record others, and everything is fine until we get closer to the end of the process. I say, okay, let's try this one again. And usually without fail, we'll record that cue on the first take and it'll be perfect. It's the weirdest thing. 
but it's all part of the recording process. Mm -hmm. um, we record on a uh, system called Pro Tools, which is now the standard recording device uh, in the industry now. Um, my music editor runs the Pro Tools system. Uh, once we finish, um, he does whatever small amount of mixing that he has to do. He will actually run a tape, electronic copy of what we have just recorded. The entire show fits on a hard drive this size. It's scary these days what's going on. We always have a backup, so he records a backup on a hard drive this size. He gives me the hard drive and I bring him home with me to make sure that we always have a backup in case he gets in an auto accident, God forbid, or whatever it would be. We have a backup of the show. Mm -hmm. So that's the deal.